Ow. Wow, wow, wow. I can't speak. Um, look, we picked the right watch along. There, there, there's no doubt about that. Uh, Aston Villa trip to Arsenal is going to be absolutely massive. But as I watch um, Liverpool trundle off the pitch, it's another Cristan Bull. Uh, Crystal Palace have cost Liverpool another big title. And the legacy of Liverpool in the Premier League era is one Premier League trophy. They probably should have three. This one was in their hands. Last time when Brendan Rodgers went to Crystal Palace, they had it in their hands. Crystal Palace have done for them twice. They've cost them two Premier League trophies. And I am surprised. I'm absolutely stunned about this. Um, Liverpool, I mean, wow. Just absolutely wow. And anybody who says that the Premier League isn't gone, it's gone. It's gone for Liverpool. They know it. And look, there are mitigating circumstances, of course. You know, Man City should not be winning this title. Hopefully, Arsenal can still do something, which will be very, very difficult for them. But look, Manchester City are top and they're going to win this league. With 115 charges, we're going to see another Man City Premier League title race. And it absolutely isn't right. But... I've been predicting it all season. I think it will happen. Um, what's gone wrong with Liverpool today? Uh, we will talk about the Aston Villa game against Arsenal because that's the game that we're featuring. But yeah, we are we are switching on here and we are switching on to a massive, massive result. And the story for Liverpool again is 70% possession, 21 shots to eight, but no goals and a loss at Anfield. What has Eric Ten Hag done to Jurgen Klopp? Because... This all starts last Sunday at Old Trafford. And since then, they've not scored a goal and they've lost two games at, Old, at Anfield. It, it, it's, it's remarkable how... And look, you know what? Maybe this romanticism, maybe this um, belief that Klopp's farewell tour will inspire these players. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't, Jamie. Maybe it doesn't, you know, at the end of the day. Maybe it's, maybe it's a hindrance. Maybe it's not a good thing because when I look at Sir Alex Ferguson, when he announced he was going to retire the first time, about 10 years before he did, we suddenly started getting loads of bad results. And then he said, I'm not retiring. And it can go the other way. And I, I think it's right. I think it's right. Uh, Kesh90 says, you were right, Mark. City were always going to scam another Premier League title. I never moved away from Man City winning this title. I'd love Arsenal to do it. I think it's going to be very difficult for Arsenal to do it. But look, the integrity of the Premier League is a joke if Man City win it. But that doesn't mean that I wanted Liverpool to win it. As a Man United fan, I didn't. I'm very surprised how they've bottled it. They should have had a penalty um, against Man City. Doku, that would have made a difference. They should have had an onside goal against Spurs. That would have made a difference. But you can't make excuses for that. And I don't think there's a Liverpool fan out there that will. And I'm sure Howard Webb and the Premier League are ecstatic because they don't want this league title won by City by a point. They want it won by five or six, so people can say, well, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. So Liverpool have bottled that. There's plenty of Liverpool fans in the chat who I've known we've had on this channel for years. Um, you know, obviously, um, as a Man United fan, I'm ecstatic that you've bottled it, but I'm also capable of, uh, of appreciating, you know, some of the regulars we have in here are Liverpool fans who will have a good conversation with us. And um, I can see them in the chats. And they're, they're basically saying we've bottled it. I mean, where where you put the blame at this? Um, I just don't know. Um, I really don't know. Um, but, you know, I think it's I think it's really interesting. And um, I think that I am surprised, to say the least, as to how it's it's panned out today. My grand, my dead grand, says Mark Goldbridge, would have scored five against Crystal Palace. Rest in peace. I think Klopp should have announced his departure at the end of the season. Ever since he announced his retirement, Liverpool haven't looked convincing, says Nigel. Uh, we ruined Liverpool's uh, season, says Travel Guide, and we should be proud of that at least. As bad as we are, hashtag players out, hashtag players in. Uh, players in, says um, uh, Travel Guide. Well done on that. Uh, honestly, I think we're seeing uh, we're see we're seeing the Liverpool. I thought we would see at the beginning of the season, says Jace. I mean, look, 
what, why do I think it's gone wrong with Liverpool? Um, if you're just tuning in, they've just lost 1-0. That league table, table is as it stands. Liverpool have played the same amount of games as Man City. They're two points behind them. They're gone. I don't think Man City lose another game, so they're gone. Liverpool are out of this title race, um, amazingly. Uh, Rooney to Girth and Turf is crazy, says her heart of United. Mate, they're doing really well. Really interesting. Um, shame that I got booted, but, you know, when you've got Rooney in the ranks, that's what happens. Merseyside derby next for Liverpool, says Philip Sutton. And I think that's it now for Liverpool. The rebuild might not be as easy after Klopp. I can give them some advice on that, says Nick P. I think the reason it's gone for, wrong for Liverpool is... Um, they don't score enough goals. Um, they really create a lot of chances, but they don't score enough goals. And I think that's the that's the problem you've got, isn't it? They, they 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 do create a lot of chances. They do have a lot of possession. They do play a good brand of football, but they don't take the chances. We saw it against United twice in the FA Cup and in the Premier League last week. I think I've just spilt tea on my chin. Um, yeah, it, it's. Um, They've only got, you know what, they've only got themselves to blame. When you lose a game and you deserve to lose a game, you can't really argue with it. It's disappointing. But when you bottle it like that, and, and they have, and the thing is, in the space of three days, they've bottled it. But also, something else has just occurred to me. This Europa League in April is a season killer. It happens every year and people don't want to take any notice. I said this at Christmas. I said... Is it a good idea for Liverpool to try and win the Europa League and the Premier League? And all I heard from some Liverpool fans was, Europa League's in Dublin, Mark. It's the destiny that Jurgen Klopp's last game will be in Dublin in the Europa League. You've just messed up the Europa League and you've just messed up the Premier League. And I've seen it with Man United. Not going for a Premier League, but trying to get top four and trying to win the Europa League. It always crumbles. It's impossible to do. And yes, there will be examples of teams that have done well, but... It's so hard to go Europa League Thursday night and Sunday in April. And every team that tries it, 90% of them fall flat on their arse. And Liverpool had a massively disappointing emotional loss on Thursday night. And then Sunday lunchtime, two and a half days later, they've got to go again. Now, that's no excuse. They should have won. But Palace are fresh, concentrated, nothing to prove. Um... I mean, some of them misses. I mean, Jota, they've got no... The thing is, they've got no excuse today as well. Jota's back. They've got all their big players back. Trent's back. Alisson's back. Um, and Salah says Curtis Jones should not have started. I mean, I've just seen a, a hat full of chances there that they've missed. It's it's absolutely incredible. Kean says, Liverpool looked like Arsenal from last season. Tired and like we ran out of ideas. We were never meant for this title. Hope Arsenal can do it, says Kean. Um, Liverpool just can't finish since Christmas, says Xander. I know Haaland doesn't fit into Klopp's system, but he would have been handy to have these last few games, says Xander. I wonder if Klopp has recommended man to succeed him, David Moore style. Should be a fun decade, says Nick P. I recommend Southgate as Liverpool's next manager, says Terence. Merseyside, Derby next for Liverpool, says Philip. I don't think it matters, mate. I, I don't think it matters. Liverpool, Liverpool fans will judge any season on first place. Second or third won't matter to them. It's gone. That that's gone. I mean, obviously the podcast will be out tomorrow. I'll talk about it in more depth, but it it's gone. Like Liverpool fans know it's gone. We all know it's gone. Man City won't drop another point. Man City will win every single game, I think. The only miracle is can Arsenal, you know, go and win every single game themselves. Um interestingly enough, interestingly enough, Manchester United have got a game at Old Trafford against Arsenal. I'll tell you what, if these players turn up in that fucking game, I'm going to go crazy. You know, all the games we haven't turned up against Man City this year and we'll decide to turn up against Arsenal. Um, yeah, I seriously... If it means Arsenal winning the league, I don't really care. I really don't care. I would take a loss against Arsenal if it means them winning the league. I don't think it will come to that. Um, but I, I don't want Man City to win the league. I want Arsenal to win it. Simple as that. Um, United Ellis um, and, and Ziz Poms are not real United fans, says Dino. Uh, Liverpool downfall sponsored by United, Mark, says Chev. Food for thought. Did Liverpool's midfield work too well too early, piling on the pressure to do well on top of the expectation with Klopp leaving, says Vengeance. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that there is a there is a big conversation to be had about Liverpool this season. I, I didn't think they were going to be title holders. Um, 
But I'm just looking at, I mean, some of these misses. Curtis Jones here, he's just got a slip Salah in. He can't be greedy in that situation. I'm, I'm looking at the second half chances here. So that's one goal they should have scored. Curtis Jones one-on-one. -on -one. Salah, that, he's got to score that. That's an absolute sitter. So that's two sitters they've missed in the second half. I mean, it's good defending, to be fair. Um, could be worse. I remember the Graham Soonest days, says As. And um, thank you very much for all these super chats. I'm just catching in, by the way. Merseyside Derby left. We've done that. Um, uh, Nick P says, I think that's it for Liverpool. Now Klopp's gone as well. I mean, they, they have probably exceeded expectation this year getting into a title race. But I, I did fancy them. I think three or four weeks ago, I thought they would do it. They had, but the trouble, look, the, if we're being completely honest with ourselves, you take Man City out of this league, it's the best league in the world. It's the best league in the world anyway. But if you take Man City out of this league, that title race is incredible. But we all know what Man City will do. Liverpool losing against Palace actually makes this league really interesting. The problem is Man City are a juggernaut. Um, I've seen these types of results before in a title race you just can't afford them when you've got Man City in the league. You take Man City out of that league and today you'd be going, what a league, what a league. And Klopp would be going, it's still on and this, that and the other. But because Man City are just so dominant because of what they've done over the last 15 years, you know, hoovering up players with all their wealth and no one else can do that anymore. They've got an amazing squad. They've got some of the world's best players. They've got the best manager and they just won't slip up. They, they, they Boring or not, Man City are just too strong for any league. And... You've got you can't, and and therefore you can't afford a result like today, which is absolutely brilliant for the league. Crystal Palace getting that result, by the way, is absolutely brilliant. It just shows you how good the Premier League is. Apart from the fact there's a team in there that's just too good. So you take Man City out this league, and that result today is incredible. It makes it brilliant. It's still brilliant. Liverpool losing, I'll, I'll admit. But what I mean is. It's boring because Man City will now win it because they won't drop points like that because they can rest their team for Real Madrid and still beat Luton 5-1. Um, but there you go. Thanks for all you do, Mark, says Michels. Thank you very much. Uh, Oko, thanks very much for your super chat as well. Um, appreciate that. Get your thoughts in. Um, we've got a massive game for you, of course. Let's get the stats carousel rolling round the screen. Um, Arsenal against Aston Villa. Um, let me just go through the Arsenal team for you. Uh, must win. I think Arsenal will wrap this game up very early, by the way, because Villa played Thursday night as well. I think they'll have a bit of a hangover. Emery's going to take this game very seriously, but he's pretty much picking the same team from Thursday. In fact, I think it's virtually man for man. So the Arsenal team is Raya, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Sinchenko, Odegaard, Rice and Havertz. Don't like that midfield three. Don't like, don't like the fact that he's gone back to that. Do not like Havertz in the midfield three, but, you know, manager's prerogative. Saka, Jesus and Trozard as the front three. Martinelli's on the bench. Um, Jorginho is on the bench as well. And Partey is on the bench. Aston Villa, Martinez, Conza, Carlos, Torres, Digne, Rogers, McGinn, Tillemans, Zaniola and Diaby and Watkins are the front two. Look, who knows what happens today. But I predict that Arsenal will win this game in the first 45 minutes. They'll come out fresh. They'll come out um, uh, excited um, and back as Premier League Arsenal compared to what we saw on Wednesday against... Sorry, Tuesday against Bayern Munich where I thought they were very nervous and... Um, yeah, I, I thought they were very... Um, yeah, nervous against um, against Bayern Munich. Whereas I think we'll see Premier League Arsenal. And look, from Arsenal's point of view, I think Arsenal fans will be quite happy with that Liverpool result, won't you? I mean, it's a two-horse race again. Why would you not be happy with about it? It, um, it gives you that opportunity to be top of the league outright tonight. So look, Arsenal, I'd love Arsenal to do it. I've said it before, I'd love Arsenal to do it because if they win every single game, they'll win the title. But as we already know, they've got to go to um, Spurs. They've got to go to Old Trafford. They've got to go to Wolves. They've got to play Chelsea and Villa at home. This is Brighton away was a tough game. Win this one, it's another one down. I, I think it's, you know, I don't know, but it, but it could well come down to... Um, 
the Old Trafford game. It really could. Um, but look, I, I, I've said City are favourites for this title for a long time. And I do agree with it. I do agree with it. Yeah, breaking news. Arsenal have lost. Uh, sorry, Liverpool have lost to um, Crystal Palace at Anfield. So Liverpool were counting out. Don't see them coming back into it now. Um, but you know what? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe they will. Um, okay, let me just do that. Right, let me get that going over there. Okay, make sure you subscribe, everybody who is tuning in. You're very, very welcome. We are live for Arsenal against Aston Villa. We've got about 15 minutes to the start of this game. Goldio says, choice between losing to Arsenal and being out of Europe entirely or winning for a place in Europa, what do you pick? I'd take the win personally. I mean, you always have to take the fun out of it, Goldio. I was saying earlier, if it means Man United losing to Arsenal, but Arsenal win the league, I'd probably take the loss. But if it's Europa League football or Conference League football, I can't take the loss. You know, I, I can't be in the Conference League. I mean, I, I, look, I don't, I don't, the circumstances have to be there, first of all. Um, sitting here saying it a month ahead is pointless. But if it comes down to it and Arsenal need to beat Man United to win the league, then um, it's not going to be down to me anyway. But I don't know. I don't know. It depends on the circumstances, really. Um, by the time Man United play Arsenal, it's their second to last game. Arsenal have only got one game after that, Everton at home. So we would know if Arsenal beat us, they're going to beat Everton at home. They're going to win the league. So we will know. We could be kingmakers. Um, I don't know whether it sits comfortable with me beating Arsenal and then Man City win another treble and four titles in a row. I mean, our season's dead. Absolutely dead. What would it mean beating Arsenal Ars and Man City potentially win a double treble and four in a row? I mean, I seriously would consider letting Arsenal win. I, I, I think that's what real support's all about. Like, you know, I, I don't want Man City breaking records and doing stuff like that. But look, I, I don't think it will come down to that, really. Um, yeah. Um, Tyrone says I bet Klopp's glad he's got Nunez and not Haaland says Tyrone um, I think from the chances missed it wasn't Nunez who missed the sitters to be honest mate um, Goldio uh, thank you and welcome to the members club uh, could Wharton be an excellent fit for United says LA Pope uh, if Salah leaves Marcus Edwards would be good says George thanks for all you do says McAllis thank you very much um, thank you everyone who's tuning in make sure you subscribe bottom right hand corner and uh, thanks everyone who's tuning in on TikTok as well lots of people following Bobby uh, Luke and Ender and Simon Wilson. Appreciate that. City are going to win the treble, says Adam. I think they've got a very good chance. They'll, they'll, I think their hardest game in the FA Cup will be Chelsea next Saturday. They'll beat Man United or Coventry without a problem. Um, their hardest game in the Champions League is going to be Real Madrid. And they're at home to knock them out on Wednesday. And in the league... I think they'll win every single game. So unless Arsenal pull off a miracle, I think they probably will. Uh, uh, Christopher's a Liverpool supporter, really hopes Arsenal win. Um, I don't think... I think apart from Man City fans, I don't think there's any neutral fans out there that genuinely want Man City to win. They've got no integrity. They've got 115 charges. I, I get it that Man City fans want them to win. That's what support is. But I don't think anybody out there wants Man City to win it. I really I really don't. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, thanks for everyone. Okay, anyway, so we're about 12 minutes away from the start of this game. Uh, we're only 200 subscribers away on YouTube, away from 133,000, by the way. So please do subscribe, bottom right-hand corner, get involved. We've got a watch-along every night this week. We've got Monday night, Chelsea Everton, 8 o'clock. Tuesday night, Champions League. Wednesday night, Champions League. Obviously, that's Real Madrid, Man City and Arsenal Bayern. Thursday night, I am going to do a Europa. Because I think it's going to be Jurgen Klopp's man last managerial game in charge of Liverpool in the Europe. So a big, big night, uh, a big, big week ahead. Make sure you subscribe. Um, next weekend's fixtures, I haven't even looked at yet. But let me just have a quick... Well, it's the FA Cup. So we'll definitely be doing Liv uh, Man City Chelsea at quarter past five. Um, weirdly, Arsenal are playing Wolves at half past seven next week. Which almost goes across Man City Chelsea. So I'll probably go from one to the other then. Um, Sunday, it's Coventry against Man United at half three. 
Uh, Fulham are away to Liverpool, but I, I really don't think it matters anymore. I think I think Liverpool are gone. Um, I mean, look, is there any Liverpool fan out there that thinks you're still in a title race? Um, I, I mean, you are technically, but I think that the, the levels of this game, I can't see where Man City drop any points. Really, really don't. Um, yeah. Um, OK, let's come back to this. Thanks for the follow, Ollie and Dollars. Appreciate that. And HJC, uh, Jesus, Jess. Sorry, not Jesus, Jess. Uh, Liverpool supporter here, really high past Arsenal wins, says Christopher. Uh, Nunez did miss one big chance, says Maradona. I mean, some of the misses are, are terrible, absolutely terrible. What about Tottenham away for Man City? <sighs> but you look at Tottenham yesterday, absolute shite. Um, what Tottenham will do is they'll beat Arsenal and then they'll, they'll bend over for Man City. I think that's what will happen. But um, we need Arsenal to go and beat Spurs so that Spurs need to beat Man City. But... Spurs will definitely turn up against Arsenal, won't they? It's just, just the way it is. Um, this is a tough game for Arsenal today. I think they're saved slightly by the fact that Villa played on Sunday. But isn't it funny? And I've, I've been waiting for this moment. Isn't it funny how Emery has, an, has a midweek game against Man City and then a home game against Brentford on the Saturday? And against Man City... He drops and rests a load of his first team players. However, he narrowly beats Lille 2-1 on Thursday night. They've got the second leg coming up on Thursday. Two and a half days later, they're playing Arsenal. He picks his strongest team. Football sometimes can get very personal. Emery, you know, gifts the points to Man City. He certainly won't do it to Arsenal because he's got a vendetta, hasn't he? Um, if you were Pep, would you finish your career at City or move on after another treble, says Carl. I don't really care. I don't think there's any credibility to what Pep Guardiola's done, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, if he thinks he's credible, that's up to him. A lot of you think he's credible. I think it's not credible what he's done at Man City, to be honest. I think it's tainted. But, you know, I'd say that about any coach. Um, do I like Pep, says Denka. I think he's a fantastic coach. I think he's coaching a machine that is un well, what I will say about Man City is whether they get found guilty or not, they've operated for the last 10 years under rules that don't exist anymore. Like Newcastle could blow Man City out of the water, but the rules have changed. So Man City, even if they get found guilty or not guilty, what people don't realise is they operated under rules that you can't do anymore. So for 10 years, Man City could spend shitloads of money and get away with it. You can't do that anymore. So I think they're very lucky. I, th I think Man City are very lucky that they've had everything go in their way for the last decade. And Pep Guardiola's not stupid. At Man City, at, at, at Bayern Munich, one horse race, open checkbook. At Barcelona, inherited some of the best players in the world. Man City, open checkbook, inherited a team that had already won the league, just went and made it better. He's a fantastic coach. There's no doubt about that. But is he an Ancelotti? Is he a Klopp? Is he a Jose Mourinho? Is he a guy that thinks I'm going to test myself in difficult circumstances? Is he a guy that goes into a place and goes, you know what, I'm going to put my managerial ability on the line and try and build something based off my managerial ability? I think he always, I think he, the thing, the thing is, I think he could do it. But I think everywhere he's gone, you can almost say, well, look at, look at the tools he's got, you know. Um, it's not salty, it's true. It's true. I've, I've just given him credit. I, there's no doubt he's a top coach. But the thing about Pep, I'll always say is, look at what Mourinho did with Porto. Look at what Klopp's built at Liverpool. Look at Ancelotti, who's been to places like Everton. Pep Guardiola goes to massive clubs who... I mean, come on. Who couldn't have managed Barcelona to success with Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets, Messi? Who couldn't have succeeded at Bayern Munich with an open checkbook? Who couldn't have succeeded at Man City with an open checkbook and a team that had already won the league? And what I'm saying is, it's not like he's the reason that they're so dominant. Anybody could succeed at there. I think Pep Guardiola should have took on an Arsenal. I think he should have took on a project club, but he doesn't want to do it. Um, and I don't care whether you're uh, um, 
I don't care whether you agree or not. I was asked a question. I've given an honest answer. Uh, by all means, go and shout in your garden that I'm wrong. But you're not changing my opinion. And if it if it if, if it if it makes you cry, well, maybe I've touched a nerve because I genuinely believe what I've just said. And I don't really care if people agree or not. And I don't care whether people think it's salty. Genuinely think he's picked his projects that a bit like Zidane. People say Zidane's a great coach. Oh yeah. Three Champions Leagues in a row is is amazing. But look at the team he had. Like, it was quite comfortably the best team in Europe for three years. So, look, people can make the choice they want. Some people take the easy path, even though they're very talented. I would like to have seen Pep Guardiola take a project on. Um, Ten Hag couldn't do it, says Omni. Yeah, that's that's not the road we're going to go down, mate. Um, that's, that's irrelevant. That's not what we're talking about. Uh, anyway, players are in the tunnel. Liverpool have lost against Crystal Palace. It's confirmed on the screen for you there. Uh, Fulham beating West Ham as well it is quite an interesting result. But can I just draw attention to that for a moment? Let me just um, let me just get that back. Right, watch this. Look at the teams who played in Europe on Thursday night. Watch what happens to Villa. This is what happens in April when you're playing Thursday night football. West Ham losing at home 2-0 to Fulham. Liverpool losing at home to Crystal Palace. So many times we've said this over the years and so many people don't want to agree with it. Um, it's a massive problem. It's a massive, massive, massive problem. Thursday night, Sunday afternoon, at this stage of the season, it's really, really difficult. And um, yeah, we've seen it time and time and time again. Right, let's get ready to rumble here. What's your prediction for Arsenal Villa? I'm going to go 3 0 Villa. Uh, so, no, not not 3 0 Villa. 3 0 to Arsenal. I mean, look, I, I really, the thing is, I really like Villa. Um, I know a lot of fans who are Villa fans, and I really do like them. But um, does it upset you that Man United are the new Leeds United, says Paul? There are teenagers alive today who only experience of United as stories from their dad, says Paul. I mean, Paul, you've got to do better than that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember Leeds winning uh, multiple Premier League titles. In fact, I don't remember Leeds being in the Premier League that often. Um, I don't remember Leeds having 20 titles altogether. I don't remember a Leeds treble. Um, I don't remember a Leeds European Cup. Um, the closest thing that, that, that Leeds are to Manchester United is, geog is geography. You, we're not the new Leeds United. You got relegated, mate. You're broke. We're, we're not Leeds. Um, Jar Jar Br Drinks. Thank you. Welcome to Members Club. Um, what's your thoughts on Wayne Rooney signing for Girth and Turf? Says Jay. Um, I wish I hadn't been. I wish I hadn't left. Mark, you were separated at birth from your brother Simon Pegg. Says David. Um, Arsenal fan here. I'm most worried about the Man United game because we beat them in September while we drew Chelsea and Tottenham. Mental aspect is there. Says Ian. If I was an Arsenal fan. I wouldn't be thinking about your second to last game of the season against Manchester United. Um, yeah, I, I think you've just you've got more than enough games that you need to go and win. Uh, Luke says, why do you hate Man City so much? Uh, I don't. I've got actually quite a lot of Man City fans that I get on with. I don't hate anything. I just think you've got no integrity. And that's, you know, what I think is irrelevant. I'm only one person, but I don't think you've got any integrity. And I don't think a lot of people think you've got any integrity either. Um I think a lot of what you achieve is hollow. Um, but that's just one person's opinion. Um, anyway, let's get back to this match. We're ready to go. It's going to be a good one. Uh, I'm going to go with Arsenal. But you just don't know the way this season's gone. You just don't know. I just saw a City fan saying, can you ban the word, the number 115? Absolutely not. There are words we do ban and block. But 115 is one we rejoice in, in the live chat and there as well. There's only one team in England and that's Man United, uh, says uh, him. Uh, thanks for the follow, Tool. Appreciate that. Uh, make sure you subscribe, by the way. Ollie Watkins could still win the Golden Boot. He's only two goals behind Erling Haaland. Um, we're only 100 subscribers away from 133,000. Please do subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. Uh, Emery huddles with cuddles with Arteta. I don't think there's any love there. Thank you very much for the follow. Bravo and T and Dan Hill. Um, 
We're about ready to go here. Um, do we even care who the referee is? I don't think we do. But uh, big day for Arsenal. Can go back of the league, back top of the league. I mean, look at the end of the day. If you're top of the league, and you know you slip up, it's over. We're we gonna kick off or what? Yeah, we go. There we go. 4.30 kickoff in the UK. Aston Villa kick it off. Why is it red? Because, oh, that's from United last night. Oh, God, get it off. Get that red off. You don't deserve to be here. There we go. <clears throat> Thanks everyone who's tuning in, by the way. Absolute legends. Really appreciate it. Um, been looking forward to this all day, actually. Been looking forward to a, a, a decent game all day. I didn't expect that Liverpool result. Zane, thanks for the follow. Um, can you say happy birthday to my dad, Basil, says Jack. There you go. Um, Matthew says, did you see that Ganacho likes your tweets? Uh, well, he's unliked them now, Matthew. I did speak about them this morning. Has anyone seen Rangers, says Gary. Goldio says Pep is a wanker. Um, yeah, well, look. I don't get involved in the Scottish League, but if I had done, I'd have said exactly the same to you as what I said about Man City. Man City will win the league and Celtic will win the league. That's my feeling. I didn't watch the Liverpool game, KK. I had it on for like the last 10 minutes when I was setting up on here, but I didn't watch it. Um, bit of a half chance for Villa there. Trossard's been hit on the back of the head by the ball. Um, thanks for the follow, big boss. Score prediction, I'm going to go 3-0 Arsenal. But look, sometimes some things happen because we're at the business end of the season. Arsenal looked shaky against Bayern Munich. Um... Can they get back to Premier League Arsenal, which has been fantastic this season? Alex says Liverpool will still win the league. Season's not over yet. How many pints you had, Alex? It's over, mate. It's over. You know, you know. It's once it's out your hands, Man City won't slip up. Odegaard into Jesus, into Saka. Good defending, but Ben White. I don't know what Ben White was doing there. Bit of a weird touch. Um, United women are about to be in the FA Cup final, says Vishnu. What have you been up to today, Mark? Well, I, went to, I did my morning show on the United Stand, which was very popular. We had about 18,000 people watching live, which is incredible for a Sunday morning show. So I think it's going to be an interesting 7 o'clock show tonight on the United Stand. Uh, then I went to watch Seb play football. Played a very good team, actually. They lost 3-1, but he plays at the back. He got man of the match. Um, and then was cutting the grass, doing some stuff. It's been a nice day in the UK. Went down the shops to buy a few bits. Bought a birthday card for my mother-in-law. Very nearly went with happy birthday sugar tits, but thought could backfire big time. So I just went with one about wine. It's the sort of mischievous thing I would do, but I don't want to send wrong messages. I think if Villa score first, Arsenal will panic, says Rob. Very good point. There actually was a card saying happy birthday sugar tits, which is a line from Gavin and Stacey, isn't it? Imagine sending that to your gran. Happy birthday sugar tits. Don't do it. John says, are you having a glass of red wine tonight? Yes, I've still got my Pinot Noir left. Um, I don't drink a bottle a day. That would be ridiculous. And having opened it on Friday, I still probably have a good glass left in there. So I'll have that while I'm on the 7 o'clock show tonight. Villa have started off well here. Could this be Man City's day? Where, well done, Raya. Look at that. Could have booted it out, took a touch and went round the player. Lovely. Things you love to see. Aren't you due a stretch, Mark? Says 66. I am, because I've been live, live since four. You're right. 
Who are you rooting for, Mark? I mean, look, I do like Villa. I do like Villa, but I think in the circumstances, it's got to be an Arsenal win, hasn't it? Um, let me know in the chat. Um, are you on Girth and Turf tonight, Mark? No, I've been binned off ages ago, mate. I was in the midfield. It was very popular in the chat. Then I was at right back. Now I don't even get asked anymore. It's, it's, it's a cutthroat world, mate. It's a cutthroat world. Um, I'm used to it at my age. Uh, fingers crossed for Jinx Briggs to strike on that Man City won't slip up statements as Nish 8. You know me too well. You know me too well. Lovely ball into Saka. Cross comes in. Oh, good defending though by, uh, I think it's Torres for us, uh, Aston Villa there. Liverpool uh, crisis video soon, says Nick. NKS. Well, I am going to, I mean, I normally would do a reaction to that Liverpool result, but we're going straight into this, aren't we? So um, there might be a double video a little bit later. Do you think Liverpool can come back against Atalanta, says Philip? Well, that's why I'm doing a watch along for it on Thursday, because I genuinely think Liverpool, that's the sort of, that's all they've got left. They're not going to win the Premier League now. So that's the last. I just feel that there might be something in that game. Yeah. Goldio says, what's Alex smoking thinking Liverpool can still win the league? Kayser Clem says, your age, how old are you, Benjamin Button? Well, I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in my 40s now, I've got to be honest. I'm playing some matches myself this summer. At some point, I've got... You know, the thing is, I've, I've committed to some games for charity, etc. And I'll be absolutely fine. But I sort of committed them in February and said, yeah, March, I'll just start getting myself fit. I've done nothing. It's mid-April. So I have got to start doing something soon. What do you think of Gary Neville's comments, says Jonathan? Please tell us what they are. I don't know what they are. Don't know what he said. Lovely play by Arsenal again. Saka's in down the right-hand side. I did say I expected Arsenal to go start off very well and score first. Mm, Saka's a bit off there with that cross. Old mate Stav says Swiss football is bad thought, says Jack. I don't watch it, so I don't know. Josiah says, hold that, you Liverpool Muppets. Hey, look, you know how football works. Man United are absolutely shit, but Liverpool bottling the league is something for us. Um, it's just the way it is. Funky says, um, as an, Funky says, as a Villa fan, I'd take a 1-0 loss. I've got a feeling we will get smashed today. I mean, look, maybe maybe they'll break the mould, but West Ham played Thursday, lost today. Liverpool played th uh, Thursday, lost today. Both of them are at home. Villa played Thursday. To be fair, though, both those teams did play teams that had a whole week off. Fulham and, Fulham and Crystal Palace, of course. What, what Arsenal need to do is get their defence back on track. That's been their big um, big strength this season. and um, But Villa can score goals. We've seen it time and time again. Uh, somebody, somebody did mention um, Leverkusen. Are they, are they in a situation where they can uh, win then today? I know there was some talk of it. I was very surprised Arsenal didn't beat Bayern, though. I mean, they're they're not all that. They're really not. Um, but I just think they had a bit of a hangover. Arsenal are settling down quite nicely, though. Knocking the ball about. Odegaard pulling the strings. Not a massive fan of Havertz playing in the midfield three, but, you know, it might work. 
Trozard playing as well. Jesus back as the number nine. I prefer Havertz as the three as the number as the number nine. Lots of the ball for Villa. Uh, it's lots. Sorry, lots of ball. Lots of the ball for Arsenal, not Villa. If you could sign two players for United, who would it be? Love the show, mates. This show. We need more than two. Um, no, we need way more than two, mate. Fucking hell! I can't, you can't solve Man United's problems with two. It's like putting a trying to put a bloody fire out with a water pistol. It's just not going to work. Um, I'd start with. Well, I'd probably start with lovely ball here. Havertz, good chance, good save, Martinez. First real chance of the game for Arsenal there. I mean, Villa are going to have to play counter-attacking football. You don't, you wouldn't expect they've got the energy. Hi, Mark. Do you think Liverpool can come back against Atalanta the way they did against Barca? Uh, 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 Ryle, I'm doing. Look, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, Liverpool fans, I would never do a watch along on a Thursday night. But I already committed. I said it on Friday to Will. I said I'm going to do a watch along next Thursday. I genuinely don't think West Ham and Liverpool will go out. Um, I think I think West Ham against Leverkusen going to have will have a bloody good go. Um, it will be a giant killing, but um, and I think Liverpool could do it against Atalanta. So, yeah. If you um, thanks for the gifted sub, Philip and Hessen as well. Appreciate that. If anybody, somebody did to say um, what your thoughts on the Gary Neville comments from Jonathan. I don't know what they are. Uh, Manchester just said, "What's your team of the season so far in the Premier League?" Um, it's got to have Anthony Gordon in it. I know people won't agree with me, but Anthony Gordon this season, if you've watched Arsenal, brilliant. Why does Ten Hag not start Diallo, says Z? I mean, I don't really want to talk about Man United, mate. We're talking about title race, but um, I don't really know. I don't know. What do you make of... Sol says, what do you think make of Liverpool bottling the title? I su I'm surprised, but... I'm surprised, but I've also been saying for a while that they missed too many chances. And um, they missed loads. Look, they should have knocked us out of the FA Cup. They missed a load of chances. They should have beat us in the league twice. They've drawn with us twice because they missed a load of chances. I mean, it's been going on for a while. Consistently taking your chances is what it's all about. And Liverpool have been consistently missing chances for a very long time. That game at Anfield was it was in December. Lovely play, overhit cross from Sinchenko. Yeah, we played at Anfield in December, I think it was, and they absolutely battered us, and we got a nil-nil draw. Same happened in the FA Cup, we beat them in extra time. Same happened last weekend, we got a draw. So, look, they they only was it McAllister at home on Thursday night a couple of weeks ago against Sheffield United. They needed a late goal there, missing a load of chances. Um, they missed a load of chances against Man City. Yeah, they should have had a penalty, but they missed a load of chances in the second half. So Liverpool have been missing loads of chances for a long time. And anybody that's been watching them knows that. That's what's going to cost them. It's not defence. It's not making mistakes. It's just missing chances. Um, and it's come back to haunt them. And the same happened in the Europa League on Thursday night. Jesus offside. Mark, you look so fed up after yesterday. This is Pranav. I'm not fed up. I'm, you know, I'm not fed up. I'm just uh... the architect. Thanks very much for the follow and Jay Bryan. My re Goldio says my mate Rich had tickets for the Arsenal Villa game today, but went to see his girlfriend instead. Call him out, Mark. He needs a talking to. Well, Goldio, if he's gone to see his girlfriend instead of going to the game, calling him out would be a waste of time because if he's if he's chosen Arsenal over Villa then he's probably getting his own goal mouth action, isn't he, if he's got any sense? In which case, either or time. Uh, bench start sell. Peep show in between as extras, says Matt. That's a good one. I'll be quick because it's a football match. Peep show in third, sold. Uh, in between as would be starting and extras would be on the bench. Um, 
we go. Uh, show's back again. If you could sign five players for United, who would it be? Uh, two centre-backs, a holding midfielder, a striker and a winger. But I still want a right back. I still need a left back. I still want another midfielder. Um, Shahir says, Torres isn't necessarily quick, but Emery still plays a high line. Surely Ten Hag can do that rather than leaving a big gate gaping hole in the midfield to Shahir. Torres is a lot quicker than Maguire, Evans and Lindelof, mate. <clears throat> I like in between us. Sorry, people who like Peep Show, but I do like in between us. Thanks for the follows uh, as well. Uh, Charles, thanks for sharing the video. You're a legend. Uh, James says, what are your thoughts on Liverpool versus Arsenal? Uh, can I just say we're only 15 subscribers away from 133,000. So if you're on YouTube, please do subscribe. Bottom right-hand corner. Remember, we've got watch-alongs every night this coming week, apart from Friday. So yeah, who, who wants a watch? Who wants football on a Friday night? Get out. Literally, get out. Hannah, thanks for the follow. Jake Ever as well. Um... He's got to be offside here, Havertz. And he's messed it up anyway. Yeah. They've, they've break, they've break. I mean, look. Aston Villa play a very high line. You can see it here. And uh, Havertz was probably marginally offside. But they can keep doing that. If you could wish Southgate on either Liverpool or 115, which one would you choose? Says 66. Well, I think even Southgate could win the league with the 115, so I'd probably wish him on Liverpool because it would cause damage. Jazz, who would you get for those positions? I'd go to Debo and Branthwaite because that's who we're looking at. I'd go Frimpong at right back. Um, holding midfielder, it's tough. I don't know what's available, but. Um, yeah, we're going to have to scout that well. Lovely play by Declan Rice here. Plays a 1-2 with Jesus. Really, really progressive play there from Declan Rice. Odegaard gets it to Saka. Little cross to the back post. Jesus. Side. I tell you what, if they'd scored that goal then, that would have been a brilliant team goal. The way Jesus played the 1-2 with Rice. I think he's a bit selfish on the back post. That, that was smooth transition from... Arsenal, really, and I just detect Villa look a little bit tired, surprisingly. I'm being sarcastic. Yeah, I think Jesus has got to go for goal there. It's a hard angle, though. Uh, Gary Neville's a rarely eight scousers, says uh, Pete. Yeah, well, apparently somebody said that Gary Neville's made some comments. I would love to know what they are, but I don't can't comment on comments. Um... Have you seen the Gentleman series on Netflix, as Hessen? I did. I quite enjoyed it. It was all right. I think as, once you get past the fact that Guy Ritchie's films are very much, you know, a bit tongue-in-cheek, a bit of banter, yeah, it's all right. Are you going to do Chelsea game tomorrow, says Jake? Yes. Chelsea Everton at 8 o'clock. Great football from the Gunners there, says Le Snide. I think Villa are playing the game the right way. You know, try and be compact and look to counter. It'd be a, it's a tough game against Arsenal anyway, but it's going to be a really tough game coming in uh, after playing a Thursday night. Thoughts on the Snooker World Championship, Mark? It's not started yet, has it, Insanity? Uh, Ronnie will be a hot, hot favourite for that. Emery looks like he's singing We Will Rock You. He's got his hands out. Uh, another question about Liverpool. What do you think about Liverpool losing? Is that very surprised? Very surprised. But that's football. You're on that channel. Saka side netting. Forget... Forgot Timber played for Arsenal. They would be even better if they had him fit. What a squad they have, says Raz. Again, look at the ball from Odegaard there. Get Saka in. Probably should have used his right foot, to be honest. Left foot, left foot just takes him wide. Who's the better manager, Ange or Emery, says Robble. Well, we did the Spurs game yesterday, didn't we? And it was... Um... 
it was terrible, really. Um, I mean, it was really bad. Good break here from uh, Villa. Oh, he's in. Watkins. He's got a bit of time. Gabriel gets back. We might get the shot off. And uh, Gabriel just waited there. And then uh, Trozard helped him out. That's what Villa have got to do. Up the Villa, says Shirley. Up the what? I know what you mean, really. Um, Michael says, do you want Ten Hag to stay, mate, or is it time up for you? Uh, I'm not Ten Hag out. That's what I mean, I'll, I'll talk about this more on the United stand, but I've, I've absolutely had enough. I thought I thought yesterday was um, was it was absolutely incredible, really. Thanks for the follow, Real Oz. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to fall for the... Let the muted people in the chat have a little laugh with themselves. Um, I'm not thick. I can see the audio mixer going up and down. So good good one trying to catch me out on TikTok that it's muted, but I didn't fall off the Christmas tree and I can see what you're trying to do. Well done. Um, thanks for the follow, Mac, as well. Um, why new players if United are keeping the player FC, says Terence. Uh, can you watch Odegaard and say Bruno can do that? I, 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 Tiago, I say this every single week. Um, Bruno Fernandes puts the effort in, but God, we'd see a different United if we actually had a proper number 10. The way Odegaard plays comparable to Bruno is just ridiculous. He's so magnetic. The way he looks after the ball, he wants to bring people into there. You watch Odegaard for five minutes. He knows his role. Get the ball, be progressive, keep possession. Bruno gets the ball. I want to do something that, uh, you know, Hollywood straight away. about now oh Havertz could have got on that Arsenal are all over Villa says Fennec but that can be a concern that can be a concern look I like Bruno but I'd love to just convince the rest of our fan base on why we need a proper number 10 I'd love to just put Odegaard in a Man United team for one game. I mean, it'd ruin Arsenal's title hopes and they wouldn't let it happen. But imagine that you could do that. Imagine to convince your fan base of the use of that player, you could actually just have a a one-game transfer. I would love to put Odegaard in United's team for the next game and just say, play like you do for Arsenal as a proper number 10. And then watch the fan base go, yeah, I love Bruno, but that's what that's what we need. We need a proper number 10. Look at him. Here he is again, look. It's just always about little pass and move, little pass and move. Whereas Bruno would be like smacking it to the right back or shooting. It's always progressive. Lovely play by Jesus in the box. What a turn. Oh, I thought he was going to score there. Good block. Villa defending well here. Do you think Ten Hag feels disrespected by Ineos, says Aaron? He has been hung out to dry, yes. Bench start sell. Van Morrison. Uh, yeah, I'm not ringing that, saying that, Matt. I'm not an idiot. Why are people blaming you for the loss yesterday, says Aturo? Because they're fucking idiots, mate. <laughs> it's just, they're morons. There's a lot of thick people on the planet. And uh, they tend to congregate on Twitter on a Sunday when they realise how unhappy they are in their lives and project it on their toxicity onto other people. I, don't, I avoid Twitter on a Sunday. Brilliant. I love football Twitter. But on a Sunday... I avoid it. It's so toxic. So I tweeted about 
my opinion on the game. Ganacho liked it, and it's my fault that United are shit. Make it make sense. Saka. Villa are defending really well here. Arsenal are having a bloody good go. Uh, do you think City will go on and win the treble, says MCFC? I think you... Wow. Well, I, I, I think you'll win the FA Cup. I think you'll win the Champions League. And I think you win the league. So I probably do. I mean, I wouldn't say it's nailed on, but I do think you've got a very good chance. It's called X now. Mate, I don't. I, I still call a Snickers a marathon. I, I still call Starburst Opal Fruits. I'll, I'll, I'll call it what I want. I'm not contractually ab obliged. Good defending by Villa again from the corner. Mark, any idea why Bruno's all over the place? Saw him taking the ball from Anani yesterday. Is it a discipline issue? I think he's just trying too hard, whack ass. I tell you what, Arsenal have played really well. They just haven't got the goal. Their press has been really impressive. And um, like I predicted that Arsenal would get this game won in the first half. I'm not wrong. Apart from I am wrong because they haven't scored. But they, they have been really at it. Um, thanks for the follow, Yamar38. Who's your ideal replacement for Ten Hag if he goes to David? Can, oh, look, not everyone on here is a United fan. Can you give us some genuine, realistic replacements for Man United that would make us better? Because that's the big problem. There's a lot of United fans saying, sack the manager, sack the manager. And... Um, you know, it's a bit like getting rid of your wife who's really good all rounder. And then when they've left you, you realise, you know, you sat at home with a pot noodle and a wank. It's it's not it's not it's not it's not progressive. So I think look, Ten Hog may well deserve the sack, but in life it's not always an improvement. You've got no divine right to have an improvement. Look, Van Hal to Mourinho was an improvement. Um, but I don't know where the improvement is. I mean, the only one I'd probably go for is maybe Nagelsmann. But apparently he's going to Bayern. So with Amarim, Nagelsmann and Alonso gone, that's three manager options this summer gone. As soon as you're down to fourth option, you're in trouble straight away, aren't you? The top three managers this summer available are Nagelsmann, Amarim... And um, Alonso. Well, Alonso's staying put. Amarin's going to Liverpool. And the Gelsman's going to Bayern. So you're straight away fishing in a pond that's been well fished. You know, if you're if, if Liverpool, Barcelona and Bayern are all fishing in the pond that you are. And you know there's only three good fish. And they've all gone. Don't moan when you pull a fucking stinky boot out. You know? I think Hansi Flick might be going... I don't know where Hansi Flick's going, actually. Oh, not Tuchel. No. You can't go Tuchel. You can't go for Tuchel. He is basically... What is Tuchel? Well, he is a German something. What manager is Tuchel? I mean, he is basically the guy that lives off reputation. His recruitment is shit. Um... I think if Tuchel was English, no one would want him. What about Pardew or Kerbishley, says Donny. Zidane won't come to England. He won't go anywhere. So that's that's not going to happen. They haven't got the money for an Emery or someone like that. Lovely ball over the top. It's Odegaard who's done it. It's Havertz. But it's very good defending again by, I think it was Carlos that time. Havertz has gone down. But it's brilliant defending here. I would wait a year and go for Ancelotti, says Hamish. Nah, good defending. What a ball by Odegaard, though.
What about Conte? I just, I just don't. I, don't, I mean, look. Maybe we want too much. We want, we want to be back and we want to play good football. Motta or Inzaghi would be great, says uh, the key ninety four. Saka with the corner, and Villa do well. I tell you what, Villa are defending well here. They're frustrating, and in these sort of games, it never surprises me if they go and score at the other end. Thoughts on Chelsea spending seven hundred forty seven million? Is that too much from signing, or has Todd Bowley made expensive during in transfers? As Christopher, mate, you need to reread -read that back. I'll try and help you. Because it is a super chat. Um, Chelsea have spent too much money on shit. Basically, I said this to my daughter last Friday. Friday night, she works. I mean, it's only a part-time job because she's still at school. Uh, Friday night, she goes down to Sainsbury's with her wages. And she comes back with a bag of stuff. And she's emptying it out in the kitchen. And it's M&M's, big bottle of pop, donuts. You know, and I said... You've just spent the money that you've earned on a load of shit. Um, and that's basically what I would say to Chelsea. It's up to you what you do with it, but you've spent it on a load of shit. You could have spent it a hell of, hell of a lot better. Three up top for Liverpool makes them a different team. Um, Sane, Firmino, missed, says Owen. Uh, Pratt... Prath Amesh, sorry, says uh, Southgate is definitely not a United manager, but could it be a good stopgap to fix the cultural issues at United? Uh, mate, I, 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 I understand what you're talking about, but the, what, what, you, what you actually mean when you say cultural issues is, is he the right guy to come in and kiss the ass of people like Rashford? Because basically that's what you mean by cultural issues. Cultural issues just means somebody that's going to come in and, you know, kiss the arse of these overpowered players. Like, what we actually need is somebody to come in and get rid of them. Potential Barca versus City Champions League final. Who would you support, says Mo? Oh, 100% Barca. I'd love Barcelona to do well, actually. They've got good players, but... Why would Nagelsmann go back to Bayern? Uh, it's, Aero, it's just what I'd heard. Liverpool, Liverpool, Leverkusen scored with a win. They will win the league today. Feel sorry for Kane, says Paul. Well, I think it's inevitable. Absolutely inevitable. Kieran McKenna, says Matt. I think they'd slaughter him when things go back. He's always coming in as inexperienced. Even if United get Nagelsmann, how would that be any different to Ten Hag two years ago, says Jimmy? Exactly. Um... Bart says, I'd worry if United went for a fourth or fifth choice because, uh, look at Spurs, Nuno was seventh choice and their whole season was a write-off. Do you remember Cameron, Jero Cameron Jerome's goal against Liverpool? Says Goldie, I remember Cameron Jerome. I'd rather have Clough than Southgate. And he's dead, says Arturo. That's the sort of thing I'd say. I understand why it's funny now. It's that added bit that you're not expecting. Good play by Odegaard. He's been fantastic. He's been absolutely everywhere. Have a shot, Havertz. Blocked. Trozard. No, you shouldn't have had a shot. Don't you just bloody love football, though? I mean, the Palace result, It's. I know it's a killer for Liverpool, but, you know, as I said, if Man City wasn't in this league, it'd be fantastic. Ryan Jackson says Villa are going to get one on the break. NUFC, thanks for the follow. I think that's the thing, isn't it? I think Villa on the break could be a could be a thing. Oh, you know what I'm doing this week, actually. Well, I am going to say it because um, if I don't say it, then I won't do it. And if I don't do it, having said it, I look all right, Pratt. Um, this week, I'm going to do a vlog of my week. So just do a minute or so every time I'm doing something. Not when I'm having a sh I mean, I can do that. There can be an OnlyFans bit where I'm having a poo or a bath. But uh, I was more about out and about what I do during the week. Um, let me know if you like the idea of that. Some of you might go, that sounds shit, Mark. In which case, I just won't put it up.
Lee is crying his eyes out, curled up in a ball under my duvet. Got to be a Liverpool fan. Uh, why do you assume Amarim and, Amarim and Nagelsmann are taken? Do you just make up stories or trust every rumour to make your arguments to Swarup? <sighs> Swarup. Make, make, sit yourself down, mate, because you're just about to get knocked down. Um, so Swarup is having a pop at me because of Amarin and Nagelsmann and making out that I make up stories and trust every rumour. I've been doing this. I've played the game. I've played the game. I've been doing this for... 10 years and for the last five years I've been doing it properly I speak to players check it check on Instagram a lot of people a lot of players follow me I speak to journalists check on Instagram or Twitter a lot of them follow me I speak to Fabrizio Romano every couple of weeks and I've done for years like I do not need to make stuff up I know some people do but I don't need to and I never have um I'm into Liverpool is massively, massively nailed on rumour from good, credible sources. Two of which are very close to Liverpool. Nagelsmann, at the moment, I don't know. But I heard from a very good source last night that Bayern and Nagelsmann are looking at options. So that's where it's coming from, mate. Um, I don't need to make stuff up. If I was going to make stuff up, I'd make up better stuff than that. I'd make up stuff like Saka wants to leave Arsenal and play for Man United because he's secretly been sleeping in his bed with a Man United duvet for the last two years. Um, Becky says, I'm gutted about Liverpool. I think they just ran out of steam with the injuries in so many games. I want Arsenal to win now. Hate Man City. Hope you're having a lovely weekend. Becky, I think that's a very mature comment from a Liverpool fan who must be hurting. Um, I think that... I don't know what it is with Liverpool. I, I think it's belief. You know, in experience, um, I sort of agree with the chat a, a bit ago. If that was uh, Mane, Salah and Firmino as a front three, you'd have won that game three or four nil. Um, and it's part of the reason I was surprised that Klopp went because I looked at that team and I looked at the progress he made in one summer. That midfield last year was terrible. One summer he rebuilt a team and got him in a title race. And I did think what he'd done in such a short period of time, even if they didn't win the league this year, They'd be hot favourites for it next year. And I think he's gone too early. I don't think that team is finished yet. Because, you know, Nunez is still new. Curtis Jones is a young player. You know, Gakpo's still learning. They're still a progressively learning team. You look at Arsenal compared to last year's run into this year. They're so different. So I think that Liverpool have had a very good season. I just think the pressure of Klopp going is a little bit too much for this team that's still learning. And they've created the chances, but they've just lacked the confidence. Um, some of the chances they've missed should not have been missed. But um, Who are the biggest footballers that follow you, Mark, says Alec? Well, you can go and find that out. Darren Moran, welcome to the Members Club. How about Gary O'Neill? Says I'd take Gary O'Neill over Potter or Southgate every day of the week. What a great show we're having anyway, by the way. Thanks for the follow, a a AFC Maz. If you disagree with me on Liverpool, by the way, let me know. Um, that's just my perception. Villa defending fantastically well here. Arsenal would expect to be 1-0 up, but the nerves will start to show the longer the game goes on. Good defending by Gabriel there, but a bad ball. This could be big for War Watkins. Oh, is it the post? Oh, inside of the post and out. Well, we spoke about the smash and grab of Villa. Gabriel kicks the ball, hits the back of Zinchenko. Watkins is running at Gabriel, gets his shot off inside of the post. You think it's going to hit inside of the post and go in. It's inside of the post, comes out and goes for a goal kick on the other side. Lovely ball by Odegaard. Lovely ball by Havertz. Here's San, uh, Jesus. Into Saka. Lays it off. Odegaard. Deflection. Jesus. Goal! What a save by Martinez! What a save by Martinez! Mother of God! The football there from Villa was magnificent. But what a save by Martinez. That is unbelievable. Trozard. Oh, he's got a score. But what a save. Trozard, dead centre. Six-yard box. 
It's a great save, but he's got to score. He's got to score. Well, I tell you what, this game's just come alive. Watkins hit the foot of the post. How does that not go in? It hits the foot of the post, spins across the goal line and goes out for a goal kick. Wow. And then straight up the other end. What a, what a, what a, what a ball by Odegaard. What a ball by Havertz. The build-up play was magnificent. And uh, for a nil-nil, this has been brilliant. Salah playing 90 minutes was crazy and painful. Will Arsenal win if Liverpool catch up with Aston Villa if they get collapsed in top four forms, says Christopher Campbell. I don't know what that means either. Will Arsenal win if Liverpool catch up with Villa? I don't know what that means, Christopher. City still got to play Spurs, says Joseph. Is that meant to be... <laughs> exactly. Did you see Spurs yesterday? Villa. I tell you what, Arsenal's football has been very tidy. Here's Saka into Ben White. Does well. Into Saka. Oh, just shoots wide. I, t I tell you, I, I can't fault either team here. Arsenal have played so well. I mean, Arteta's there like that, getting the crowd up. They've played so well. But Villa have defended well. So good, says Fist. Still nil-nil, Harry. Just spilled my drink over my Villa top when I thought Watkins scored, says the HPN. It's been a cracking game, you know. It really has. Uh, if you're on YouTube, please do subscribe, by the way. We're only 10 subscribers away from 133,000. Bottom right-hand corner to subscribe. Get involved with that football. You're all welcome. Doesn't matter who you support. Even City fans have been known to wander in here and survive. Hi, Mark. Love United Stand content. Can you shout out my small business, KH Kicks? I sell football boots. Uh, my parents find it weird that I listen in the shower. Says OPT. Um, I feel like I've been done there, but I don't know how. Uh, here's Jesus. Oh, into Trozard, but it's a bad pass. Villa defending well still. You know, maybe, maybe Villa will start to believe. Zaniola as well. Spurs are going to lose to Man City if they somehow beat Arsenal. No one should put their hopes up for Spurs, says Nigel. I see Bayern beating Arsenal if they play like this, says Jordan. Look, I know Arsenal fans are going to like what I've got to say here, but I actually think Arsenal going out to Bayern will help them, help, help them in the league. I don't think anybody wants Arsenal Man City Champions League semi-final. On paper, it sounds fantastic. In reality, we've seen them play twice this season and it's boring. Lovely play by Saka there. Yeah, of course, Arsenal have got to win here first. A draw would, would, would put it... Firmly in Man City's hands. I still, I, I think Arsenal will win. Havertz, no one in the box. The amount of times they've got in behind. James says it could be more interesting in a knockout, not over two legs. Havertz would have been offside. That's the wonder of offside. If they score from that, it's offside. Because they didn't score, VAR won't review it, so it'll be a corner, won't it? Oh, no. No, it's not a corner. Favourite US player, Mark. Cheers, man, says Aaron. My favourite US player now? Um, Trozard should have scored that, you know. Um, I don't want to say Perisic because that's what everybody says. I, 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 I do like... Some of you midfielders. Um, free kick on the edge of the box for Villa. I mean, should he? Should he should be getting at least a yellow here. No. 
Saliba was there. He wasn't going to go through one on one. Yeah, it's definitely outside the box. It's a good free kick position, though. I mean, I don't know. Matty Cash? I quite like the le the left back that you've got for new uh, for, for the for the states Robinson. Uh, at first, you didn't feel Havertz and Odegaard worked, but now they're a great duo. What do you think has changed and made him more um, them more a potent duo? It's it's Med. Dinier could hit it. Well, it's going to be Dinier. Dinier, yeah. It definitely suits the left footer. I mean, they, they, you know what? You're watching this as, if you're a Man City fan and you're thinking this could be our day. Palace winning at Anfield. Um, let's see what happens here. Big moment in this game. I don't know that Arsenal having to come back from 1-0 from down would be tough. Is McGinn going to hit it? I think Digne is hitting this. Here we go. Ref's not blowing his whistle yet. Yeah, Digne into the wall. Wall did its job. First goal is going to be key in this game. Look at the amount of empty seats for half-time. Oh, no, he's playing on. Hi, Mark. Wasn't a wind-up. Swap Haberts for Bruno, says OPT. Nah. Mark, Mason says, uh, help a friend from work. He's getting into soccer and he decided to support City despite me explaining the 115. Well, the fact that you called it soccer is a, always a bad start uh, in my book. Um, well, if he wants to pick Man City, he's looked at the league table and just been a glory supporter, hasn't he? Hopefully they'll get relegated to the National League and then he'll end up having to change his team again, won't he? Uh, just about the end of the half here. Look, Arsenal just need to keep at it. At some point, you'd expect the tempo to tell. Would you rather Andy Murray or Southgate for Man United manager? Also, who's getting relegated in your opinion, says Goldio? Um, I haven't looked at the bottom of the league, actually. I still think it'll be Luton. I still think Luton will go down. Um, but look, they're only a win away from making it interesting. Um, Everton have got two games in hand and they're two points clear of Luton. Um Luton have got, it's, it's Luton home games really. They've got Fulham at home, Everton at home and Brentford at home. If they get nine points from them, I think they'll stay up. Um, Forest have got, well, they've got Man City at home. They won't win that. They've got Everton away. They won't win that. They've got Forest at home. They won't win that. They've got Sheffield United away. They won't win that. I think Luton is staying up. Didn't, I didn't realise the fixtures. Bloody hell. Yeah, I think Luton is staying up. Forest's last few games are Everton away, City at home, Sheffield United away, Chelsea at home, Burnley away. Yeah, I, 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 I've just changed my opinion. I think Forest get relegated. Yeah, looking at it like that. Thoughts on Chelsea finding another loophole, says Savannah. Well, more for the Premier League for providing them. Um, have you paid any attention to the championship? Both ends of the table are really fun to watch. Both ends. Um, if I speak right, let me have a look at the championship. Uh, we're half time here. What a fantastic game it's been for a nil nil. This is why football is brilliant. If you can appreciate a nil nil, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, top of the championship at the moment, 89 points Ipswich, 88 points Leicester and 87 points for, uh, Leeds. Um, only three games to go. Ipswich getting promoted will be very, very good. Amazing, in fact. Uh, 
let's have a look at the half-time stats. Please do subscribe and thanks for all the follows. Uh, let's have a look at the stats here. So there we go. Um, and we're on a pause, which is good. There we go. So 56% possession for Arsenal. 14 shots to seven, three shots on target to zero. Of course, Watkins did hit the post, which is not counted as being on target. Only two corners in the whole game. 90% um, pass accuracy from Arsenal. They have passed really well. Look, I think Villa have defended really, really well. The, the question mark is... What happens in the second half? Because Villa played on Thursday. Are they going to become more tired? We've already seen West Ham lose. They played on Thursday. We've seen Liverpool lose. They played on Thursday. Have Villa got anything more than just counter-attacking football? Because they're defending really, really well. But Arsenal have got to win this game. They can't They can't not. Pick one. Odegaard or De Bruyne, says Ali. Well, De Bruyne is better than Odegaard. It's easy. Thoughts are... So we've done that one as well. Um, what do you think about Liverpool, says Clown? Um, I think that... With regards to Liverpool, um, I'm very shocked, of course. But um, yeah, it's 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 a tough one. Um, I feel that um, maybe the inexperience has hurt them. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's certainly. Um, It's certainly a, a, a different, uh, you know, look, it's surprising. I, I, I don't know why I'm stuttering on this one. It's surprising. And they have bottled it. But as I said, I feel like, um, I feel like, um, what's this? All right, that's just uh, that. Oh, Liam Gallagher, that was what I was looking at. Liverpool fans giving me verbals, I love it. Bring it on, just remember I'm up there with your beloved Shankly. I've achieved, I've won things your little memes won't. Win you trebles or residency at Nebworth, so sit down. Liverpool getting sat down by uh, Liam Gallagher now. Just got to roll with it. Uh, would you take Roy Keane as manager? No, Tom, I think that'd be absolutely stupid. But no, I think with regards to Liverpool, um, I just think Klopp's going too early. I think that team is probably not quite ready yet um you look at arsenal last year with arteta they weren't ready this year they're a lot better um jürgen klopp to me looks like a guy who's just had enough and wants a break um and when you think it deep he's probably trying to fast track a premier league that they're probably not quite ready to win the premier league yet um and i think that's what's happened there um our corners is wasting the worst chances, uh, Christopher. Uh, Sean says, I'm not going to lie. This Odegaard performance is sublime. He's not put a foot wrong or we just need that goal to open up the game more and make Villa come out at us, says Sean. Yeah, I think, I think this game, from Arsenal's point of view, has been very, very good. They do just need that goal to open up the game. But obviously, Villa are defending very well. Um... I just wonder whether it might be one of those days in the Premier League race where you'd expect Arsenal and Liverpool to win and maybe neither of them win. Um, Arsenal need to do a little bit more. I wouldn't say they deserve to be in front because Villa have defended very, very well. Um, the two big chances are Watkins and Trozard. Arsenal have been better, but Villa's game plan at the, at the moment is, is very good. I mean, they're literally set up to nick a goal and defend. Um, would you claim Premier League titles we have if City guilty? It says OPT. No, I'm not. I'm not interested in that. Who who wants a Premier League title off off City? Retrospectively, what we're we gonna do? Just have a have a bus tour for 2020 or whatever. whatever. Nah. It, it, if you've if you've cheated, you cheated, isn't it? You know. It should just we'll just put an asterisk next to it. Um. can't believe there's still people in the chat asking about win, lose or draw. It's, it's not been a thing since January. What are your predictions for Arsenal's remaining fixtures, says Harrison? I don't want to jinx you. So, you know, 
Um, you've got to win this game first. Then you've got Spurs. Um, how, what, what's Arsenal's next game, actually? Have they, got a, have they got a week off next weekend as well? I know Spurs have. FA, no, no, no. Arsenal play Wolves, don't they? So that'll be tough. Arsenal, Arsenal's still got to win this one. They've got to go to Wolves. Then they've got Chelsea. Uh, then they've got Spurs. Then they've got Bournemouth. Then they've got United. Then they've got Everton. There's still a lot of games left for Arsenal. Um, yeah. King Cop says, Why is Bundesliga streamed on YouTube but not the Premier League? Because it's a crap league that no one's really bothered about. So they're trying to boost their numbers by putting it out there for free. Whereas the Premier League, everyone wants to watch it and you can charge them for it. I couldn't answer it any better, could I? Um, Liverpool's three away games on the spin. Arsenal have Spurs, United, Chelsea. It's cities to lose, says Sean Edwards. I agree. I agree. Uh, Liverpool, Leverkusen are going to win the Bundesliga, says the Red Devil. Thank you very much. Um, who do you think is going to get fifth place, says uh, Quaff. Um yeah, I don't I don't know. It will be Spurs or Villa. Um I don't know. I really don't. Um I, I this weekend is almost the league weekend of people who don't want it. I mean Spurs performance at, at Newcastle was abysmal. Fair play to Newcastle. Um Liverpool today have obviously let down their fan base. And Arsenal aren't winning yet. So we are getting into the choke area of the season, aren't we? Um, who do you think is going to win the league? Says Buck. Well, I, I said Man City at the start of the season. I, I still think Man City. I think their experience and in-depth quality makes them favourites, doesn't it? Um, Arsenal play Chelsea midweek before Spurs, says Paul. Yeah, a lot of football. A um, lot of football. What did Jurgen Klopp say, says Eric? I, I hate it when people say, check what somebody said, because I have to go searching for it, and I'm I'm streaming here, so it's difficult. Um, let me see if I can find it for you. Oh, Jurgen Klopp says we are ho we were horrible to watch. I feel really rubbish. Um, he says the first half performance was horrible to watch, and they cannot win the league if they play like that again. Well, you know, he's not wrong. He felt really. He says he f I felt really rubbish. Um, And uh, we had bigger chances than Curtis's chance. I have the Darwin chance. That's how it is. He hits the ball full throttle. If he mishits it slightly, there's no chance of the goalie. Similar with Yotta, I would say. Salah's chance, I don't know who it was. Maybe Mitchell, who hits more or less on the line. It's just horrendous. Yeah, look. Liverpool fans don't need, need us to tell them that that's, um, that's a terrible result. Uh, Christopher says, "Has Paul Merson keeps his own co has Paul Merson kept his own comments by anal analysing? We will be learned by Arsenal if they make mistakes." Christopher, I can't translate what you're talking about. I would seriously stop putting super chats in. I don't know what you're talking about. Who's getting sixth place? As Fraser, uh, I'd say Newcastle are probably favourites at the moment. Uh, what do you think of Spurs over the next two to three years? Is Michael? Well, I don't know because I think that um, Ange has had a very good first season, but. Lots of managers. Look at De Zerbi. He had a good first season, struggling this year. Second season syndrome for managers. It's always the key season, isn't it? Also, they'll have Champions League football to put up with. That can be quite... Look at what happened with Newcastle. Um, who? How would you consider a good manager these days, says Le Pope? Well, I think a good manager these days is a coach that plays good football and wins. Um, I think you can al almost become a little bit too hipster in the modern game where, you know people champion coaches in the way that they play, but they don't actually achieve anything. So I think that in the modern game, you know, it's not, not too, you, you don't look too far away from the likes of an Arteta or, um, or an Emery, or obviously a Pep and a Klopp. Like it's about being successful and um, 
playing good football. That's what a good coach is. Um, results are important. Um, simple as that. Um, how much credit do Arsenal get if they win the Premier League, says Leo? I think if Arsenal win the Premier League, it will be incredible because I still think that Man City will win it. I think they're massive favourites and I think anybody that topples them is going to deserve a huge amount of credit. I don't think Arsenal will do it. I hope to be proved wrong, but I don't think they will do it. I think that the uh, the Man City machine is, is almost stepping into position at the right time, isn't it? As it always seems to do. Um, and of course, Arsenal aren't winning yet. I, st I, th I think they will win in the second half, but there's a, there's a hell of a lot of work to do. And it will be squeaky bum time. I think Arsenal fans will have been excited by what they saw when Liverpool lost. But it will now start to drop into their head. Could we be next? Uh, thanks everyone who's watching, by the way. Please do give us a follow if you're on TikTok or subscribe on YouTube. We were so close to 133,000. So please subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. We've got 45 minutes to go here. Uh, can Arsenal get over the line and get the three points? I mean, look, the concerning thing is, is that when you look at the uh, Man City, they are starting to pump the goals in as well. Plus 44, plus 51. If Arsenal were to draw, they would be top, but Man City are starting to score goals as well. So that goal difference thing... Um, could still be a thing. Um, Leverkusen looking like they are champions as it stands. I mean, they're going to win it anyway. They're, they're, I mean, that, that, that's, that's absolutely uh, incredible, isn't it? And let's not forget, Bayern Munich only won the league last year because Dortmund bottled it in the last game. Dortmund were at home um, Dortmund were at home last game of the season last year. All they needed to do was win and they lost. Which players follow you, says Bobby. I'm not here to... St I, I speak to players. I don't disclose what they say because that's what trust is all, all about. So I'm not going to hear... I'm not here to start saying this player, that player, this player. I don't start um, throwing you that sort of stuff. Um... Would you take Odegaard at United to Jesse? I would I would literally give him a piggyback all the way up the M6. He's that good. And I think he'd be that transformative. Transformative. Kieran and CR7, thanks very much for the follows. Right, the players are coming out. Second half here. Um Wait a minute, I'm just gonna see if I can put an order in. I fancy Arsenal to do it, but the way football's working at the moment, I don't know. Solo, Solo, thank you very much for the follow. And D as well. Um, we're ready to go, second half. Shamone. Look, at this stage of the season as well, certainly for Arsenal, you're not gonna win every game three or four nil. You're gonna have you're gonna have a couple of games where it's uh it's squeaky bum time, and uh, they're going to have to respond, of course. Um, we're about ready to go for the start of the second half here. Odegaard to kick it off. Go. We're up and running. But very, 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 very good comment, of course. Uh, wouldn't expect anything different from you lot. Um, if Arsenal score a goal, the game will change because Villa will have to open up. Sam says, why are there Liverpool fans in here? I thought they'd be in your cave. Well, it's all or nothing for Liverpool on on Thursday night. Can they turn around a 3-0 deficit? Who's going to win the Euros? Says Ass. England. 
I know Southgate's crap, but the players we've got, we should be winning it. You can tell Villa are clock watching already. Digne leaves the ball right next to him to go and get the ball that went 10 metres away. Every second, every, every second chance. Every second counts. Every second chance. Love the channel, Mark. Who's been the signing of the season, in your opinion? I say Rice or McAllister. I agree with you, James. I do. I agree with you. I think Cole Palmer's got to get a good shout as well. Oh, Saliba. Arsenal can't afford any mistakes. I'm looking forward to the Euros. Got lots of plan, lots of plans. I think we're gonna. I'm gonna do some of the watch-alongs like I do this, but I think uh, me and Will are gonna open up the Goldbridge Arms and maybe do some from there as well. So yeah, I'm looking forward to the Euros. It's always a, it's a bubble. International football shit, but World Cup Euros, summer bubble. I quite like it. Tea. Nice cup of tea for a second half. Um, I'm on United stand at 7 o'clock tonight, by the way. Havertz. Slips it into Jesus. Ooh! No. No. It's one of those where the ref's got to give it, but uh, no, he hasn't got to give it. What I mean is it's one of those if he gives it, it's soft, but um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I've seen him give it. I mean, he, he wins the ball and then... I think maybe Arsenal should make... I mean, I tell you what, man, that's the, that, that's the difference, isn't it? Man City would crowd the referee about that. It's soft, but... You know, on this day in 99, Giggs scored an amazing solo goal against Arsenal in the FA Cup. Did you see that live, says Quinton? Well, I wasn't at the ground, but of course I did see it. I was alive then. From what I recall, I think it was a Wednesday night. A bit hot. Let me put a tweet out. Read it if you're on Twitter. It'll wind everyone up. Um, Bubakar says, if uh, if Arsenal draw, Man City are going to win the league. Arsenal can, draw, Arsenal can afford a draw, though, can't they? Arsenal can afford a draw, one draw, because they've got the goal difference. They can't afford a loss. Clear handball there. No, they can't afford a draw, apparently. Is there any scenario where... Oh, is it because it's as it stands? Yes, I think that's what it is. Yeah, it's as it stands. Arsenal can't afford a draw. Arsenal got to keep winning. They're a point behind them at the moment, but that's with the point already on. Sorry, that's my fault. They were two points behind before the game. Um, Quinton says, yeah, I've done that one. Thank you very much. Alex54322, there's your name. Uh, not Lali says that tweets class mark. It's a classic Goldbridge Sunday tweet. I don't do X or Twitter on a Sunday. It's horrible. It's toxic. You'll get death threats. You'll get people saying stuff about your dog and your mum and your dog and your mum. It's a horrible place to be. So for me, Sunday's the perfect day for X because or Twitter because I put the tweet out. I will never read the replies. Odegaard hits a free kick into the wall. Uh, Christopher Campbell with his most coherent uh, super chat of the day. Would you take PewDiePie as a player of the YouTube All-Stars? Well, I don't pick the YouTube All-Stars because if I did, we'd beat Sidemen. That's the whole problem. Um, if I could pick the YouTube All-Stars, it'd be a different story. 
Angry Ginger would be on our team. Noah Beck would be back. Harry Pinero would be back. We'd keep Philly, Chunks and Nico. And um, it'd be a bloody good game. I'll go in goal. Lovely cup of tea, that. Oh, it's a lovely cup of tea. Guess what I've got? To, guess what I've got for tea tonight? If you're under twenty, you won't even know what it is. Stew. Do you know what? Does anyone know what stew is under under the age of twenty? Oh, it's a lovely dinner. I had an amazing dinner last night. I've really started trying different foods. I, I trust you to do it. Diaby. I had sun-dried tomatoes with... What did I have last night? I had sun-dried tomatoes, quiche, um, a really lovely green salad, beetroot, kimchi, coleslaw, and some lovely fresh wholemeal bread buttered. Mark has the greatest Twitter X game known to man, says Nick P. It's the equivalent of throwing a grenade into a group of morons and walking away. Uh, Nick, basically yes. Basically, yeah. I, t I tweeted Chris Dan Bull with three minutes to go yesterday as well. Um, hot pot's lovely, yeah, my dad. Samuel says, where did I've played the game come from? Soonest. I think he did say it, but he's only probably said it once, and I just jumped on it. You can turn something into a, a saying. I just couldn't believe it. It's a bit like, do you know who I am? I, look, I've played the game. Basically, it's soon as his get out to knowing more than anybody else. James Gaming Studio, get all the girth and turf lads into the All-Stars. I think that's where it's heading, mate. I think, um, I don't even know if there'll be a YouTube All-Stars this year. I reckon girth and turf will start playing proper games and then, yeah, it's, it's a logical way to go, isn't it? Good block. Uh, Villa are probably having their best few bit, bit of time at the moment. Come on, the Villa, says Oscar. They're, they're doing well at the moment. Zaniola into the box. And, uh, Watkins shoots over the bar. Thanks, James. Uh, Maj Majman says, do you think Salah should be sold? I think he's going anyway, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, James, you're an absolute legend. I'm just going to... Pin that message. She's got the link for the book where you can pre-order my book. Absolute legend, anybody who's pre-ordered it. Um, you can get a signed copy from WH Smith. You can pre-order the Audible audio, which uh, I have recorded. It's my voice. Um, I really like audio books as well. I never, I never, I always used to prefer reading it. But you know what? If you do a lot of traveling and stuff, an audio book's great. You can close your eyes. Offside. Uh, where did Sunshine Gary Neville come from, says Rose. Bloody hell, it's like a, it's like the origins of every bloody line I've got. Um, Sunshine Gary Neville. Well, Manchester Oasis. Sunshine. So I just made that one up. Sunshine Gary Neville. I've not done it for ages, that. Uh, Let him speak, Simon, comes from Jim White, who I think said it once. So I've took that one as well. Slow Sports News is just Sky is crap at transfers, so I made up Slow Sports News and gave a Scottish twist. Yeah, thank you very much for supporting the book. Uh, everyone who's pre-ordering it, you're absolute legends. Um, still nil-nil, AZ. Why did you stop your predictions with Ben, says Mark. I can't believe this question's still being asked, man, me. Because I've left the fill-in, we fell out. I got fed up of him walking around in his shorts like a big show-off. Oh, I've been cycling. I was up at five o'clock. I said, are you Ben Foster or are you Gary Neville? I come here for a relax. I'm tired of seeing your knees. I'm out. 
I know you've played the game, but I'm out. Lovely ball by Odegaard. Trozard with the cross, not going to be good enough. When we get in Goldbridge, Angry Ginge, watch along, says OPT. I think, I don't think we will. I'd like, I'm happy to do it, but I don't think we will. Baden, thanks for your chat. Love that. Matty and Alfie, thanks for your follows on TikToks. Shout out. I'm doing Chelsea Everton tomorrow, Kate. Yes. I Can't Speak was from a clip from two funny lads from Australia who were doing the darts. So they took it from that. I took it from them. Um, Arsenal not playing as well second half. This first 10 minutes has not been good. Felt bad for you from the Ganacho like tweets pile on. Never top. Never stop sharing your opinions, says Connor. I mean, I, 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 I don't really understand that. You know, you put a tweet out, a player likes it, and it's my fault. I mean, it's just incredible, isn't it? It's like, you know what that's like? It's like, um, it's like a baseball bat company making a baseball bat for to be played with sport, and then somebody goes and does an armed robbery with it. It's not the baseball bats company fault, is it? It's not nothing to do with them. It's just thick. Um, yeah, I mean, we're nearly only got half an hour left already. Arsenal need to just uh, play the game a little bit here. Who do you think will get promoted from the championships, says Jared? I suspect it will be... Um, Ipswich and Leicester. And then take your pick in the playoffs. I am doing Liverpool Atalanta watch along on Thursday BC on this channel, yeah. Leon Bailey's coming on. Baden says thoughts on United versus notebooks out yesterday. I don't know what that is. Thanks for the follow. I can't read it out. Don't know what that those symbols mean. I'm on the United Stand at seven o'clock anyway. So if anyone wants to talk about United, just uh, let me know. Oh well, join me at seven. But this is all about Arsenal and the title race. Liverpool have already slopped, uh, slipped up today. Pardon the pun. Villa are growing in confidence by the minute. Especially defensively. That'll be a corner. That's a corner. Yeah. Torres. Re Raise, thanks for the follow. Luke O'Mahone, thank you very much for the follow as well. And Ryan's B2206. So Arsenal have been good, good at corners. I haven't spoke to speed in ages, Ryan. Kieran, I'm all right. I hope you're doing well. Snaps is on the red wine. I'm going to have a glass after this. Good defending again. Oh, Rice. Uh, Trishan says, I bet they talk about you on the overlap for the tweets that Ganacho liked. <laughs> Do what they want. I, I think it, I, I think if you're going to talk about somebody, then you've got to have the balls to talk to them. So, you know, I'd be a bit disappointed if they did, considering it's well known that, you know, I'm not welcome. Mark, breaking the no Europa watch-alongs on that's football, says OPT. I just think it's going to be a good night on Thursday night. You know, West Ham against Leverkusen, Liverpool against Atalanta. I've just got a feeling. And you know me, I tend to pick the right games. Are you on the fill-in this week, says Dino? No, I've left. I've told you. I'm fed up with the shorts. No more win, lose or draw. No more fill-in. I'm finished. It's 
favourite Sidemen member, says Ryan. Mate, that's... That's filth. Thanks for the follow, Big Lawrence. One, two, two. I've just literally just... I read it all the time, yes. Are you on Talk Sport Radio? I think I'm on Talk Sport tomorrow morning at half seven, actually. Um, just as a guest. I don't know when I'm next doing the Saturday night show because there's just so many Saturday night games now. It's like if there is a game, then my show isn't on because they've got the coverage. So I don't know whether I'm even on before the end of the season now. So it's weird. You, you, you get five or six weeks in a row and then you have three or four weeks where you're not on. Corner for Villa there. What is Sinchenko doing there? I tell you what, Sinchenko is a bag of shit. Why? The, I, I, I've never, never, never. Sinchenko is so bad. He's nearly cost them a fucking goal there. Taking somebody on on the edge of the box, and then Villa have just hit the bar again. Arsenal are really struggling here. There's, there's a player for you. How overhyped is Sinchenko? It was uh, Tillemans with the shot. I'd love to see a replay, but they haven't shown it as yet. They just keep showing as the back of somebody's back. It's one of those where it nearly hit the bar and hit the line. He's very overrated, Sinchenko. They, they need a left back. They need a, they, I mean, it'll probably be Timber, won't it, to be fair? Linda says, I don't like Sinchenko. He's very arrogant. Villa are, are playing better here at the moment. Villa have definitely been the better team in the second half. Look at Odegaard again. Lovely ball. Havertz, you've got to play that quicker. Jesus, now Saka. Good save. Jesus shoots. Ben White. Why have they not shown the replays, as Joshua, of the Tillemans shot? Because they're fucking rubbish at their job. Oh, here we go. Here it is. Oh, my God. It hits the bar and drops on the line. It's one of them. Slow it down. Fucking hell. You, here we go. Slow it down. Oh, it, no, it didn't hit the bar and hit the post. Fucking okay, hell. I mean, to be fair to Villa, they probably deserve to be winning. Arsenal need to, uh, Arsenal need to change this. I'd get Martinelli on. Trozard's not had his best game. Another corner for Villa. Uh, Villa crowd are really getting up for this now. Do you think Ipswich Kieran McKenna could potentially be United's manager in three or four years or so if he carries on doing well? Says Gavna. Um, I think he's just. I think he's doing a fantastic job. I think at United he deserved the criticism. He wasn't quite ready. Same with Carrick. You go off. You do your uh, apprenticeship. Um, that's what it's all about. I'm not leaving, by the way. Imagine if I just that that was my. I've quit. I can't remember when, when, when Goldbridge quit, he just literally said that about Kieran McKenna and then he left. I wonder what my final words on stream will actually be. There will be a final stream at some point. Hey, up. High foot. Odegaard as well. Right in the face. I mean, if he's broken his fucking cheek, that'll be ridiculous. Take a look at this. Hopefully he's all right. I can't lose Odegaard. 
Did he get in the face or the chest? No, he got it in the chest. I mean, it, it, it's one of those. You can't be sending him off for that. Take a look at my girlfriend. She's the only one I got. Uh, Martinelli coming on and Tommy Asu coming on. Don't disagree with that, actually. Thanks for the follow, Emma. Ben White coming off. Don't know why. Bit of a weird one. Yeah, bit of a weird one. Uh, thanks for follow. Ayu, Hannah, and following. Shay Edits, L. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think Odegaard's coming off. Hey, Alice, thanks for the follow. Joel Timbers, bread as well. But what I was going to say is that there's no question that Villa have got the momentum at the moment. No question at all. Uh, there is no contact between Manchester United and Gareth Southgate. No, there's no, there's no official contact, but he's definitely high up. Uh, how much chance Chelsea beat City on Sammy on Saturdays is a Toro? Oh, I, I just pre-ordered the book. When it does it release as Jordan? You're an absolute legend, mate. Uh, August the 1st. If you want to pre-order it, the link's in the live chat pinned by Gems. Uh, you're an absolute legend, Jordan. Thank you very much. Um, Chelsea haven't lost to Man City this season. So, you know, who knows? But... Um, I don't know how Chelsea haven't lost to Man City this season. Having watched Chelsea play a few times this year, I think they're uh, they've been poor. But uh, Valroy says, "What do you think about Diego Simeone?" Look, the football at Atletico Madrid isn't as bad. Two years ago, Roy Keane and Either Skulls or Butt said they'd take Diogo Simeone, which was laughable because at that point, Atletico Madrid were averaging about 40% possession every game. You know, you can't have that. But in fairness, Atletico Madrid the last year or so are a little bit more front foot. So I wouldn't personally take him, but I'm not going to, you know, I, I watch football. I keep my full finger on the pulse and I think saying Simeone is a boring manager is a little bit unfair because there, there has been a bit of a change recently. Uh, Punch Painters, hello, Rhiannon. Uh, Villa have not scored, by the way. Joe, thanks very much for the follow. Joel, thank you. Uh, race for the title, I'd remove Liverpool from it. 
pay the money for Emery, says Charlie. Well, you know what? I'm just right. I'm using this for the seven, seven o'clock show, and I know you're very pro Emery, Charlie. I'm just writing a few names down. Um, Arsenal are not playing well. Second half. This is a worry. I thought first half they played really, really well. Second half, they look really, really off it. And is that a mentality thing? Who would you rather win on Tuesday, Barcelona or PSG? I think I'd rather see Barca win it, to be honest. Um... Here's Martinelli. No kickoffs, at, kick ups at half time anymore. Says Pete. I can bring it back. I'll be happy. To, I need to get start getting fit. I'm going to bring that back. What about Motta or Xavi? Mark says Ali. I mean, I'd take both of them over Potter or Southgate. Um, I just think the problem is there's not really an obvious choice to go with, is there? Uh, Shane says, I think this is going to be a draw. Good draw. It's a good point for Villa. Thanks, Mountain. Favourite vegetable, Mark. Mine's Michael... I'm, I'm sorry, mate. I'm blocking you for that. I, that was lazy as me as well. I nearly just went into... You've got to be very careful of that. I'm normally very good at it. I'm probably the best in the game. I've played the game. But sometimes you can get a super chat or a comment and you just read it in auto. And you actually need to read it a second before you read it. Disgusting. Um, close one, yeah. It's always good to be reminded that you've got to be switched on. Thanks for the follow, Jewel. Match reaction after the game, says Paul. Yep. You should get your coaching badges for content, says Azid. I, know, I very nearly did it in COVID because you could do it online. Thanks for the follow. Adam, Harvey, uh, Phil as well. Demi too. Um, what's your opinion on the game, Luke? First half, I thought Arsenal were very good and Villa defended well. Second half, I don't know what's wrong with Arsenal, but Villa, who played on Thursday have been the better side in relation to chances. Add Rogers to the list was always the right guy, says Eduardo. And as United fans, we want Villa or Arsenal to win, says Punch Paint. I want Arsenal to win. Yeah. Definitely. Leverkusen, Bundesliga champions. See what happens with this corner. Um, do you prefer teams that play overlapping or inverted fullbacks? I like wingers and fullbacks that can beat a man one on one, but seems less common now, says Connor. Um, there's no handball there. No handball there. Um, I prefer overlap. I prefer a fullback that overlaps. I prefer a winger that gets down and whips across in. The inverted stuff is just about overloading the midfield. That's what it's all about. Well, if you're an Arsenal fan, you're going to be starting to get really nervy here. Because it's not like you're laying siege to the Arsenal goal. To the Villa goal. And it's Villa again.
Hessen says, genuine favourite vegetable. Mine's a, a good broccoli. I do like, I like, I like my vegetables. I do like broccoli. I like, like carrots. Aubergine. Tino and Alex, thanks for the follows. Here's Watkins again. Good, they're a good team, Villa. Remember, Liverpool always had to go to Villa as well. Like, you know, talk about Liverpool dropping points against Palace like they're going to go and win every other game. They've actually got to go to Villa Park, which I don't think... Well, they dominated Man City, didn't they? Cucumbers are salad, surely, Drim. Uh, not Lali says, if you could steal one player from Arsenal for United, who would it be? And it can't be Odegaard. I'd be Saka then, yeah. Look at Villa. Hunting in packs here. Uh, well, another double substitution for Arteta. Jorginho and Smith Rowe. Oh, I've just found these Gary Neville quotes now. I mean, I'll probably bring them into the United stand, to be fair. But apparently he says, I'm seeing breakdown at the end for Ten Hag. Um, why, did they, why did they put... A, I don't want to listen to his voice. I just want to read the quote. Let's type Gary Neville breakdown. That's how, no, he's, not ha he's not having a breakdown. I mean, he, he's just said... He can see a breakdown. Gary Neville reveals telltale signs Ten Hag is suffering Man United breakdown. Um, there's nothing more to say. We've seen it all before. It's a repeat of what we've seen over the last six, seven years. Yeah, Managers in their second season, third season, sometimes at Man United where there seems to be that sort of breakdown at the end. Uh, performance levels... Um, Again, discounted injuries as a legitimate reason. Oh, no, that's just he did that last week. Just wrong. Uh, Barry says, "Do you think City will win every single game?" They've got left. They might not need to. I mean, look, Arsenal got 10 minutes. I mean, it's, I'm stunned by Arsenal's second half. I mean, are you in a title race or what? First half, I really saw it. Second half, are, are you telling me that Aston Villa have just been better than them? Because that's the only explanation. Looks like a draw here, says Becky. Going to have a jacket potato tonight. What's your favourite filling? Oh, pardon. Um, Becky, I would say my favourite filling in a jacket potato. It, 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 it depends on the mood, really. That's why I can never do my favourite takeaway, because it depends on the mood. But if I was having a jacket potato tonight, Becky, what would I put in it? I would have... I think I'd have to go chilli, beef chilli, bit of cheese, bit of sour cream, and a few spring onions on the top. Saka, you should have passed that quicker than that, mate. Whips the cross in. And Villa clear it again. Thanks to the individual. It's Villa again. Leon Bailey. Look at the effort levels of right. 
Pratt's at Ineos never wanted Ten Hag. He knows it too, says Juan. Well, that's how the league table looks at the moment if it stays a draw. Villa just seem to want this more at the moment. It's uh, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. They've given it a good go, but... Uh... Not been able to break through. Still nil new, still nil new, still nil nil, DX boy. And it's Villa coming forward again. I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling. And it's not an Arsenal win feeling. The clock has been ticking down all day. And Arsenal are. Well, they're struggling here. What the fuck's going on here? Sorry, you've lost the live chat, that's why. Still Villa on the attack. Goal. It's been coming all day. City's title. Game over. Unbelievable. This game is unbelievable. Only got themselves to blame. I mean, they've only got themselves to blame. Second half, Arsenal have been shit. Absolutely incredible. I, I, I just don't know what Arsenal... First half, really good. Really good. Second half, absolute shit. Villa totally deserve this goal. Like Arsenal, I don't even know what was said at half time. Did Arteta say let's let Pep win it because he's a good mate? Because first half, Arsenal was so good. Second half, crap. And let's not forget, Villa played Thursday night, not Arsenal. You'd think Arsenal played Thursday night. And we speak about mentality and we take the piss out of Liverpool. What Arsenal are playing at second half, I do not know. I really don't know. It's unbelievable what we're witnessing today. Unbelievable. Today, well, Arsenal are already sponsored by Prime. Prime bottlers. Simple as that. Jack says, best football channel on YouTube. Thanks, Jack. Unbelievable. Look, you know what? I'm conflicted because I think I really like Villa and they deserve it, but Arsenal's second half performance is 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 a is, is a joke. Like they've been crap for 40 minutes. It's not a shock. 
Remember Tillemans hitting the bar? I can't remember a good chance for Arsenal second half. It's, it's really bad. Watkins. 2-0. What a goal. What a goal by Ollie Watkins. It's over, Arsenal. What the fuck are you doing? Absolutely unbelievable. I just, I, I can't speak. I don't even support Arsenal. I wanted Arsenal to win, but they don't deserve to win. They don't deserve to win second half. They've been absolutely fucking rubbish. I thought this mentality thing was over with Arsenal. You don't win something by falling over at the last hurdle. And that's what they've done again. And they've got to get rid of Zinchenko. I mean, what the fuck is he doing giving five yards to Ollie Watkins? Bullies him. Absolutely. Ollie, you know, Sinchenko may as well have not been there. Oh, it wasn't Sinchenko. It was, oh no, it wasn't Sinchenko. It was Smith Rowe. Well, what's he doing as your last man? I mean, I bet Ollie Watkins then, his eyes must have lit up when he's up against Smith Rowe as the last man. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish from uh, Arsenal this. You can't argue about it. You can't argue about it. They've been absolutely... Would I take Watkins at United, Shane? I would go down to Arsenal. I'd get Odegaard on my back. And then as I went past Birmingham, I'd put Watkins on as well. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. And... Uh... Maybe KSI and Arsenal thought the prime deal wasn't about bottles, but uh, it clearly is because they've bottled this. Prime bottlers. I can't believe what we're seeing today. I mean, Man City won't believe it either. Pep Guardiola would never in a million years have thought Palace and uh, Villa would be Arsenal and Liverpool today. Never in a million years. And you've got to give Villa such massive credit as well because they played Thursday night. Emery gets the last laugh, says HPN. Make sure you subscribe, by the way, bottom right-hand corner and give us a follow. This is a huge result in the Premier League. It's been a huge day in the Premier League. I always said City were going to win the league. I've got Will, in the, Will on the podcast saying, rah, rah, rah. look, I've played the game. I've played the game. Man City don't do what Liverpool and Arsenal have done. They, they don't do it. They just don't do it. It won't happen to them. Well, we've had Liverpool fans at the start of the show in disbelief, gutted. Did Arsenal fans really think they'd be joining them? Look at those results today. Look at those results today. Three away wins. Liverpool, West Ham and Arsenal all beaten at home. You'd never have gone with that. No, no gamblers never going to go with that. Incredible stuff. Title race over in mid-April. Um, yeah, probably is because I think the, the mental damage this will do to Arsenal again. Yeah, I, I, I can see City winning it by five or six points now. Arteta out, says Kaz. Uh, South Holland says, I'll never forget what you said about the weak team Villa put out versus City compared to what they put out against Arsenal. You're absolutely right. What I said was it was a disgrace, the team that City put out, uh, Villa put out at City, where they basically gifted them the points. And there's no way they'd go three days later to Arsenal and do the same thing. But look, that's football. Yes, City got a big advantage, but this is personal for Arteta. Uh, this is personal for Emery. He's got a, he can pick whatever team he wants. Uh, Malp says, "Surprise, surprise! City win the league again." What what do you put this down to, Arsenal fans? Though I mean, uh, as an outsider, it's um, it's hard to see you play so well in the first half and then. It's almost like you stopped. 
for some reason, Villa have been the better team second half. And I, I don't really understand it. Um, uh, DT, 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 DT the General says, um, you just got to put it down to Villa being brilliant second half. Well, they, they have been better. That can happen. But you, you, you expected Arsenal to... I don't know. You just expected Arsenal to up go through the gears. I mean, there's one thing that's sort of coming into my head here about this game. I just want to double check it. Digne, 84. Sorry, Bailey, 84. Watkins, 87. Minutes. Odegaard off on 79. Yeah. I, I, I hadn't realised Odegaard went off. I mean, I don't know whether that's to do with an injury or whatever, but yeah, I think that's a that's a big, big, uh, a big, big thing. Look, I, I'm disappointed. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pretend I'm not disappointed. I'm disappointed as a as a Man United fan and a, as a fan of football and the integrity. I don't want Man City to win this league. I don't want Man City winning this league at all. Um, Makes me want to throw up, if I'm being honest. But it's not as much as I don't want Man City to win it. There's no reason for Liverpool to lose to Crystal Palace at home. And there's no reason for Arsenal to lose to Villa at home. And uh, bottom line is, Man City may not be everybody's most liked football club. But Arsenal and Villa, Arsenal and Liverpool have bottled it today. You know, you, you can't. It's not because of a dodgy penalty decision, is it? It's not because of a, a points deduction. Um Yeah, it's um. We would have a really good league if Man City wasn't in it. Like we would be going, oh my god, this is the best league ever. If Palace had beaten Liverpool and Villa had beaten Arsenal, we'd go, oh my god, what an amazing league it is. Unfortunately, there's a team called Man City in it, who spent ten years doing what they did, and are now a juggernaut about to win four in a row and as much as we like this Premier League I think we've all we've also got to say it's turning into the French League like there is one team that is ridiculously balanced in their favour and nobody can get near them because I think that Liverpool and Arsenal have done very well this year but even doing well they won't stop Man City winning it um, you know, I, I, I'm biased. I always say that the Premier League is the best league in the world. But it, can it be the best league in the world when the same team wins it every year? And we've been stuck in that situation for a long, a long time. Uh, do you think United will win the title now? And it's not just four in a row. It's... Is it six in seven or five in six? Do you think United will win this title, says Abhishek? No. Vert's hat trick, incredible, says Paul. Leverkusen win the Bundesliga. Arsenal bent over and Villa have entered them, says Dalibur. Do you think this will affect Arsenal going to Bayern? Oh, 100% at Toro, yeah. United only got beat Coventry to get European football next season. We don't get Europa League win or lose the cup final, Shane. That's not how it works. Goes to a league position. Uh, Diego Carlos has been given player of the match for Aston Villa. They've played really well. You know, I don't want to take anything away from Villa. They've played so well. And of course, one thing we've not looked at, because we're all being very locked in on the league title, is that, um, look at the, not the league title. We're all very locked in on the title race. But look at that. Villa are now three points ahead of Spurs in the race for Champions League football. And Spurs will be 
Spurs fans would not have expected that tonight. They would not have expected Villa to get those points. So it's a terrible night for North London because Spurs look like they could be bottling fourth and Arsenal have probably just bottled the league, let's be honest. They had difficult games to come. This was always going to be a difficult game, but the way they've surrendered it second half is um, worrying. Luke Jones says, Today reminds me of United hunting down Newcastle all those years ago. City's mentality is coming through again. Emery playing a strong team here instead of the Etihad, thinking he could get a result. Yeah, and also Emery has been sacked by Arsenal. He's not going to put a weak team out for Arsenal, is he? He'll put a weak team out for City because he probably wants City to win the league because he hates Arsenal. Like, that's the way it goes. You sack a manager, ain't going to do you any favours. I guarantee you now, if Man United were in a title race and uh, we were up against um, Mourinho and it was Mourinho, um, it was Man United and Chelsea in a title race, he'd put a weak team out against Chelsea and a strong one against us. It's the same thing. Uh, Mrs Stone says, Mark's been saying this for years. The only reason City have been winning it consistently is because of squad depth. This was just more proof. Oh, yeah. Well, I know I've said it for years, Mrs Stone, but um, 100% Man City's squad depth is the best. And they haven't had the injuries that Liverpool have had. And they've got a much better bench than Arsenal have got. And over a 38-game season, it will help you. Antonio Conte and Klopp, only two managers to win in the era of Pep, says Cal. I mean, Havertz, I did say at the start of the game, don't like Havertz in the midfield. I don't know, you know, you can't change it, but I really think Havertz should not have been in the midfield. I don't know why he doesn't start party. Empty seats everywhere. Well, it's the same old story for Arsenal, isn't it? There's not empty seats in that corner. Look at the Villa fans. They're loving the trip to London. We're in London, aren't we? I'm going to do a quick react match reaction, but I am live at 7 o'clock on the United stand, so it will have to be a very quick one. Uh, absolute legends for tuning in, by the way. Really, well, I can't say I've enjoyed it because I wanted Arsenal to win. I don't want City to win the title, but what I will say is that Man City have been, uh, uh, Villa have been absolutely incredible second half, and they well and truly deserve to win it. So, just got to give it that. Mrs Stone says Ranieri won it when Pep was manager. I think he did, actually, yeah. Hansi Flick has coached for United as Ag. I don't know where he's going, mate. Final whistle. There we go. I'm on the United stand at 7 o'clock. I'll see you then. I'm going to do a quick match reaction on here as well. Take care, everyone. The title is going to be Manchester City's. Liverpool and Arsenal have absolutely bottled it. Unbelievable. Take care.